Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Crazy Cycling channel and video six in my series on wheel building. And in today's video, I wanna talk about why you shouldn't worry too much about over-tensioning spokes and why a wheel built with under-tensioned spokes is weaker than a wheel built with over-tensioned spokes. Okay, so first of all, what's the problem if the tension in a wheel is too low? Well, as you ride your bike, some of the spokes in your wheels will experience tension, so the tension will increase, and other spokes will actually in experience compression. And if the spokes compress too much, they will slacken completely, and when a spoke slackens completely, it can bend out to the side, and that will put a lot of stress on the spokes. It can also shock the spokes, and your spokes can break. And the best way of preventing your spokes from slackening completely is simply having a high enough tension, which basically acts as a buffer because as compressive forces are applied to the spokes, it takes a lot more of that, uh, I guess, pseudo compressive force to slacken a spoke completely. So tension in wheels is partially a, a protection against spoke slackening completely, bending out to the side and then either braking or just fatiguing much more dramatically than they normally would. Okay, so now we know that spoke tension should be high enough to prevent any of the spokes from ever slackening off. But couldn't you tension a spoke to the point of breaking it? Well, in theory, yeah, of course you could. But in the real world, this is very unlikely for at least two reasons. The main reason is that the distance between the rim and the hub is fixed, which also means that the spokes uh, points of support are fixed. So what does that imply? Well, obviously that means that you can tension a spoke by turning the spoke nipple. The more you turn the spoke nipple, the shorter the spoke, and that spoke then has to make up the distance between the rim and the hub, and it has to stretch. However, a spoke would have to stretch significantly in order to break, and this really can't happen in a bicycle wheel. So imagine, I hang this spoke from a really strong support and pull down on it. Well, what happens is the spoke stretches, but as the spoke stretches, my hands move along with the spoke and I'm able to maintain that high force. But in a bicycle wheel, that can't happen because the points are fixed. I mean, the distance between the rim and the hub is essentially fixed. So I can't move with the spoke as it stretches to keep up the force. And that is necessary in order to actually break the spoke. Okay, so you're very unlikely to reach what's called the ultimate strength capacity of the spoke, simply because the design of a bicycle wheel doesn't allow the spoke to stretch to the point of failure. Again, because the distance between the rim and the hub is fixed, aside from, of course, the effect of the ground as the bicycle is traveling and the wheel is rotating, but that variability in the distance between the rim and the hub is, is also pretty minor simply because there are so many spokes that keep the wheel in equilibrium that the distance still doesn't really vary very much. What does happen as you cycle is that you develop a slight uh, slack, um, flat spot underneath the rim, but that will only serve to um, reduce the tension in the spokes at the bottom of the wheel, and that shouldn't really increase the tension anywhere else either. So you're very unlikely to completely break a spoke. However, you can reach something that's called the yield point. And the yield point is basically the tension at which the spoke deforms permanently. And everyone should have some familiarity with this. If you've ever played with something like a paperclip, if you're very gentle with a paperclip and just barely bend it, it will return back to its original shape. But if you bend a paperclip really hard, it will deform permanently and you can never really get it back to the original shape. And the same thing happens with a spoke. If you, and the way you could potentially reach this is if you kept tightening that spoke nipple and stretching the spoke out too much, eventually something would have to give and the spoke might elongate permanently a little bit. But this is kind of a self-limiting system because as that spoke, if that happens to the spoke, all that will happen is that the tension in the spoke will actually reduce because now the spoke is elongating and becoming longer. And in addition, because of the different shapes going on in the spoke, we have a J-bend here and we have some threads here, 
This yielding will occur only in certain areas. You'll have some localized yielding at the threads or at the J-bend. And again, that would sort of serve to self-limit the, uh, the tension in the spoke. However, you're very unlikely to even be able to achieve the tension necessary to cause some localized yielding within the spoke simply by tightening the spoke nipple. And the reason for that is that you'll eventually simply just bottom out the threads on the spoke and then you won't be able to tighten it anymore. So it's just really quite difficult to damage a spoke by over tightening it. All of this is not to say that you should simply tighten all your spokes as much as possible because even though you're very unlikely to damage the spoke and even if your spoke tension is, is too high, you're very unlikely to damage it by cycling you certainly could potentially damage your rim. And also if your spokes are too short, you're much more likely to over tighten them. And this could start breaking things in your wheel. Eventually something is gonna give. It might not be the spoke, but it could be the rim. You could pull the uh, nipple straight through the rim or crack the rim around the nipple, or you could pull the hub apart. Something will eventually give. Uh, so your spokes shouldn't be over tight, although, the danger of over tightening is, is just not that significant. Um, and I guess, you know, the best way of measuring your spoke tension is with, a, is with a spoke tension meter, but they are very expensive. I personally don't have one, but there should be a little bit of give in your spokes. If there's no give in your spokes and if they twang when you flick against them, uh, they're too tight for sure. And then you need to reevaluate the wheel a little bit. But Generally in wheel building, it's just because of what I described earlier, um, just not very likely that you will reach the point of damaging a spoke by over tightening it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you have some thoughts on what I just explained, I'd love to know down there in the comments. Um, and I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed these videos, please consider subscribing and liking, and maybe I'll see you in the next one. Thanks as always, take care, have a great day, and maybe I'll see you soon.